Hi there, Robert Smitty Smith here again, and I'm going to take this opportunity to walk you guys and girls through weight and balance, how to measure it on a vehicle, specifically vertical center of gravity. How do you locate vertical center of gravity? Well, first, take our little example up here. I have my little generic convertible sports car. Uh, I have a 100 inch wheelbase, I have 1200 pounds on the front wheels, I have 800 pounds on the back wheels. If we use the front, center of the front wheel as our datum line, the first thing you have to do is establish a zero reference point. It can be nose of the car, it can be contact patch of the wheel, it can be in front of the car, it doesn't matter. You have to have a datum point where you zero out the inch dimension and component of the car. So we've got 1,200 pounds here, 1,200 pounds here. You take at your zero datum, we need inch pounds of moment. Engineers deal in moment arms. So zero times 1,200 is zero. And back here on the back wheels, we have 800 at 100 inches, so we have 80,000 inch pounds back here of moment around the zero point. Now, you multiply these things algebraically and you add them. So here, we add our pounds, 2,000 pound car, we have 80,000 inch pounds, we divide 2,000 into 80,000, guess what? The pounds cancel, leaving us with inches. 40 inch center of gravity. So, 40 inches from the zero point in a vertical line will be the center of gravity of the car. Will be on a point on this line vertically with the car level. Now here's a thing that will help you out. Measure your floor and make sure it's level. If it's not level, make shims and level out your scales. Okay, if it's not level, it's going to throw all the readings off. Now, this is simple, straightforward stuff. Vertical is a little trickier. Here's what you have to do to get vertical. You leave the back wheels on the scales. You make a stand that will support the front wheels. You set the car up. Higher is better, but don't go crazy and be unsafe. Now, what's going to happen is, is weight is going to shift back to the rear wheel. So this rear reading will go up. The front one will go down. You can figure that out by how much this one goes up. You don't have to have scales on the front one. Don't put them in there. It just makes it trickier and less stable. Just use the back scales. Now, I've changed all of this into a simple diagram. There's my original 100 inches. The wheelbase now becomes the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Da 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 da. And here was our original center of gravity line. We take this dimension, we take this dimension, we calculate the new center of gravity on this system, and we extend a vertical line up where these two lines cross. Guess what that is? That's your vertical center of gravity. Now here is a little trip point that actually happened on our cars. Notice that the car pivots around the center of the wheel. Okay? So I had my guys and girls down in the shop do this exercise. I couldn't be with them at the time. They did it. And I said, okay, what did the calculation show? Where, how high is your center of gravity? They said, we did it. It worked great just like you said and our center of gravity was two and a half inches above the ground. And I crossed my arms and I looked at them and I said, now let me get this straight. We have a car with two inches of ground clearance and so our center of gravity is a half inch above the bottom of the car. Does that sound right? No, it's not right. Wherever the pivot point is, it was two and a half inches above this line not the ground line. So that's the trip up. Your center of gravity will not be the number you come up with. It's not going to be here. It's going to be here. It can even be forward of the original line because the original line here, notice what happens when you pick the car up and it tilts. It can actually swing forward. If you've got a very low center of gravity in a vehicle that would be virtually at the bottom of the car, it will actually swing forward. So be aware of that because figures don't lie, but sometimes the interpretation can be confused. 
All right, that's vertical center of gravity. You're going to need vertical center of gravity for a lot of other things to calculate on the car. So, this is how you do it. Just that simple. Have at it.